Hello students and welcome to the instructional video on how to take uh, resting blood pressure. A couple of things that we need to keep in mind when we are taking resting blood pressure. The first thing we have to realise is that a client's blood pressure is very responsive to the situation that they're in. A client may feel very stressed or very nervous about having a fitness assessment for the first time. So it's important that as a part of the screening process that we build a very strong rapport with our clients and also make sure that they are very relaxed. So when we're actually coming in before we start a fitness assessment, it's important that we do keep the client seated for at least five minutes before you take their blood pressure. This just allows them to get down to a resting state, ensuring that their blood pressure, but also their resting heart rate is down to a normal sort of level. Now, when we're taking blood pressure, it is a skill that does take a lot of practice and time, so it's important that you do practice it as much as you can. To start off with, there are two bits of equipment that we do use for taking blood pressure. The first is a sigmometer. This is an example of a sigmometer. This is a, a, a very easy sigmometer to use because it has a nice large dial there that allows it to make it makes it very easy to go ahead and to measure blood pressure. Um, the, uh, there are different types of uh, sigmometers that we do use for taking blood pressure, so it's important to realise that this is one that we use in an educational environment to uh, allow students to see how to take blood pressure. You also need a stethoscope, and again the stethoscope is used solely for going ahead and listening to the heartbeats as you release the valve on the blood pressure cuff. One other thing that you do need is alcohol swabs keeping in mind that hygiene is very important and there's a pretty good chance that a number of people will use the, set, the stethoscopes. These are obviously going into your ears, so making sure that after you finish with those at the end of your fitness assessment, that you simply take out an alcohol swab and clean the ends of those ears. This is an alcohol swab, simply take the alcohol swab out, go ahead and clean each earpiece with the alcohol swab and it is ready for the next instructor to use. Okay, now before we uh, get started, we'll assume that um, Simon, our client, is, is nice and relaxed and what we're simply going to do is give him some background about why we take blood pressure and the importance of taking blood pressure and then we'll go ahead and get it all set up. There is some debate about which side of the body is preferable for taking blood pressure, whether it's the left or the right hand side. It really doesn't matter in this situation, um, whatever's comfortable and, and depending on how the fitness assessment room is set up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we simply want the client to have their palm facing up and it's important that the palm is resting or the arm is resting relaxed on top of a table. So body positioning is very important. Once you've got the arm resting, we simply want to roll up that top sleeve, just tuck it in and get the client to rest it down. You just want to expose the upper arm because that's where the cuff is going to go on. If the client has a long sleeve top on, it's okay to take blood pressure over the top of uh, some clothing or material. It's just simply follow the same protocol. You may just want to roll up the sleeve so you can get access with the stethoscope onto the point there where you're listening to the pulses come through. Once you've got the sleeve rolled up, we simply are going to undo this cuff and we're going to apply it to the arm. On this actual cuff, and just about all cuffs that you'll see on sigmometers, is has a artery index marker. This artery index marker points down to the arteries where we listen to the pulse come through, uh, which is in line with the bicep muscle. So we simply need to line up that artery index marker onto the arm, onto the arm roll the cuff around and attach it. Now once the actual cuff is on there, we want to make sure that the cuff is not too tight or too loose. An easy way to determine uh, the tightness of the actual cuff is to simply stick your finger up and underneath there. If your finger fits underneath comfortably, then the tightness is fine. Once you've got the cuff on there, grab the stethoscope. Now a few things that you need to remember with the stethoscope. Most stethoscopes now have a valve on it. So what happens is that you've got this little valve at the back here. You simply turn the valve off. When you turn the valve off, what it simply does is it creates a hole in that valve and the actual sound waves pass out through. If we lock it, what that means then is that when we a sound or a sound wave goes through that point there, it'll actually reverberate and you'll be able to hear the sound through the earpieces. So make sure that the valve is actually locked and closed so you can use it properly. Okay. Before you start testing the blood pressure and actually putting the actual stethoscope in your ears, Make sure that you just put it around your neck, position the stethoscope onto the arm just like so. Use your thumb to actually hold it in position 
and then go ahead and just put the stethoscope earpieces into your ears. Once you've got yourself all set up, you want to go ahead and inflate the actual cuff to 180 milligrams of mercury. So it's pretty simple, you simply just pump up and you'll notice as we increase the actual pressure in the cuff, we'll take it up to roughly 180. Once you've got it up to 180, you let it stabilise and then you slowly release the air out of the, uh, the sphygmometer. There's the first beat at 108 and the last beat at 78. So for our blood pressure for Simon today, his pulse, his first beat that I heard was at a 108, which is the systolic blood pressure. I heard a number of beats as it continued down to the last beat that I heard, which was the at 78 milligrams of mercury for his diastolic. So for Simon's blood pressure today, 108 over 78. Now the key to blood pressure is we have two types of blood pressure. We have systolic and diastolic. The systolic blood pressure is the first beat that you will hear as you release the air out of the sphygmometer cuff. The first beat is the systolic. As you continue to release the air out, you'll hear number of beats as it drops down. The last beat that you hear is the diastolic blood pressure. So again, that's where you get the average blood pressure, which is 120 systolic over 80 diastolic, and that's how we measure it, just like that.